Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Yes, and happy Sabbath. Welcome to Revision, Revision Live. Live. It's, it's time, time to, to be revived. revived. <laughs> Revision Live, okay. Yes. Well, I am Micah Moore. And I'm Rose Dorval. And welcome. Good morning. Well, we want to say, you know, happy Sabbath. Thank yes. you for tuning in with us this morning. Yes. Drop in the chat where you are watching us from. We want to engage with you. Of um, wherever you're watching, if it's morning, afternoon, evening, we yes. say happy Sabbath to you. And we are so happy to be here with you today. And let us know what's the weather like, because out here, it's it's gloomy. Yes. <laughs> in this Atlanta metro area, it's right. very cold. And uh, like that drizzly rain yeah kind and then of. it's kind of windy yeah. It's just, yeah it's just not good vibes altogether but at least we're you know at least we're in the house of the lord yeah so Amen that will that. cheer right. us up and brighten us up right well it should right <laughs> <laughs> well micah how was your week my week i'm gonna say overall physically mm -hmm. it's been good it's been good mentally and emotionally it's been i've been growing uh -huh. and so i feel like that's a bit challenging yeah. i feel very drained i was just talking with um chelsea and we were just talking mm -hmm. about that like i just feel you know just trying to work and overcome yeah. some things but overall you know health um you know healthy everything it's is good. great that way just yeah. just growing just yeah. seeing what god has for me yeah how's your week you know my week it wasn't it was kind of hectic okay but towards the end it was it was better. Good, I can't, yeah. I honestly, I can't complain. It was a good week, but I just, it's just like the flows of like the week, yeah. you know, it mm -hmm. starts heavy and work and all that stuff. Right. But overall it was a good week. Yeah. And then you get yeah. to Friday and you're like, Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> Thank you Lord. <laughs> well, we want to hear from you guys in the chat. Let us know how your week, um, has been Timothy says good morning and happy Sabbath from Lexington, Kentucky. Kentucky. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna be ignorant, but from Kentucky, only thing I think about is Kentucky. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> uh, Dominique okay. says she's watching from, from Montreal. Montreal. Is she said for four C? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, good morning to you. Kenny says, hey, Revision family, y'all already know where we're watching from, right? from, the from inside the sanctuary. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Michael. Happy Sabbath from Baltimore, Maryland. Nice. Yes. Thank you for joining us this morning. I know yeah. it's cold over there, too. Yeah, it probably. is. <laughs> Rita uh, says, good morning and happy Sabbath. Good, good morning, morning and happy Rita. Sabbath to you, too, Rita. And Shirley says, good morning, everyone. Yes. <laughs> Keep it general. Keep it general, yeah. yes. Well, that's great. Well, we're glad that you're tuning in to Revision Live. A rise of reminder. Revision Live is a time for us to connect mm -hmm. before the service. You know, you don't have to be in person. You can be online. That's the beautiful part of it. Yes. But it's time where we recap events. We mm -hmm. spotlight ministries. And then we share how God is moving in us and in our community. Yes. And just for a reminder, Revision Live is now 30 minutes. So yes. you get to, like, interact with us for a good 30 minutes <laughs> <laughs> before the service. But it's just a time to catch up and connect and, you know, just enjoy opening the you know the service together yes of course but we want to start by saying happy women's history month yes, yes. We're in the office, you know. we left black history month yes you now it's women's history now month, it's women's history month. Yes. yes i love that um so since we are in women's history month we wanted to kind of do a little a little game right. um if you say so who is your favorite female Bible character? Okay. I'll oh. start with you, Mike. Okay. I'll okay. <laughs> put you on the spot. <laughs> okay. So I might be a little basic, but I'm going to say Esther. So okay. I was watching, actually watching the movie of Esther, and it's the fact that she really risked her life to yes. stand before the king at yes. a time where she she couldn't have. Yes. I mean, even now you see it through timeline, women don't mm -hmm. have a voice, they're not supposed to speak, but she said, for God, yes. I'm going to take that stance and I'm going to speak. And she knew she could have died. Yeah. And yeah. it's just like that that type of courage that I mm -hmm. want, mm -hmm. you know, to, to have. That was beautiful. I yeah. Love that. I would say my favorite female Bible character uh, is the woman with the issue of bleeding oh yes for 12 years right. suffering you know yes. being ostracized from her community exactly. she couldn't even be out and about i right. mean if she was even to touch someone she would be considered unclean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so for her to have that faith even oh. though she knew she would risk her life right. to just touch the hem um of jesus mm -hmm. and to know that possibly yeah. she could be healed and yeah. then for god in a midst of such a large crowd to be like who touched me? You know? right. <laughs> like, he felt that. He yes. felt that. He felt something leave him. Yes. And in that passage, it talks about how God says, 
you know, it was because of her faith mm -hmm. that she was healed. It wasn't yeah. even just the action, but like yeah. she was at her wit's end, yeah, really. And for her to take out to go on that leap of faith, mm -hmm. I really like that story. And it's the fact that she didn't know. Yeah, she, she didn't, didn't know if she was going to be cured or not. Yeah. So yeah, that's beautiful. So definitely. Okay, what is your favorite female Bible character? Yes. Come in the chat, let us know, and tell us why. You yeah. know, how has that female impacted your Christian walk? Because we might like the same person, but for different, for different reasons. reasons. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Wait, Dominique says Ruth. Yes. yes, Ruth. And why, Dominique? Tell us why. <laughs> but yes, Ruth is a good, she's yeah. a good theme, uh, mm -hmm. character. All right, let's see. Well, do you have, let's say, um, even if it's not a, like a Bible character, but someone in your life, a female in your life that has really like impacted your life, yeah. like your mom or sister, yeah. anyone like that? Me. Not you. Like <laughs> <laughs> but I, I would like, like to congratulate me. Right. <laughs> But I do feel like we always do talk about our moms uh -huh. because they do play a fundamental yeah, part in our true. lives of who we are, especially when we are women. We kind of grow to be our moms that's in true. either like her or the complete opposite of yeah, her. So, yeah. yeah, definitely my mom. What about okay. you? I would say my grandmother, who okay, that's nice. was the matriarch of my family, but she was just like a very classy, mm. loving, someone who was down to earth, who enjoyed yeah. You know having fun yeah um but just taught me a lot of like spiritual principles oh, i grew up with my grandma in my home so she just like took care of us she yeah. was kind of like our mom in some ways uh but she definitely has always been like my favorite you know person in my That's life yeah. what would you say a spiritual thing that she taught you or something that she remembered um some well so my grandma used to do like these 6 a.m. Bible. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, she was old school. She was not playing. Yeah, right? she was not playing. Before school, we would have to wake up every morning wow. and, like, you know, do a little song, a that's prayer. Um, so that's kind of always stuck with me. I mean, yeah. I don't do it at 6 a.m., <laughs> but just to, like, have that moment with God, find a moment to have with God. Right. And I have a friend who she'll always put, like, a timer um, on her phone. So, like, yeah. if she's at work, whatever she's doing, just for a moment when that timer goes off, when mm -hmm. that, like, reminder goes off, yeah. just a moment to, like, pray and, like, reflect on, like, the goodness of God. Yeah. So. And that's so good. I actually saw a sermon, and this pastor was saying that when you get your weekly schedule on Sunday mm -hmm. and your phone, your iPhone tells you, yeah. you spent eight hours on oh, your yeah. phone, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, what if we take 10%? And just spend it with God. We can break it up into little increments, yeah. 10 minutes here, five minutes there. But that's so important yeah, to smart. just give him glory. And it's mm -hmm. so easy to get caught up in the week and a lot of bad things happening. Yeah. So taking that time to be grateful for what you have, you'll get yeah. so much more blessings. I like that. And that reminds me. On the fourth, uh, what is it, Wednesday of every month yes. at 6 a.m., we have our prayer Yes. A prayer call at 6 o'clock in the mm -hmm. morning. I was there. If you weren't at this one, then be at the next one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. Well, we want to hear from you guys in the chat. Let us know who your favorite. Uh, oh, we have Dominique says. Oh, okay. So she's answering to her question. Right. She illustrates that genuine love yeah. can be experienced in a daughter and mother-in-law yes. relationship. Yes. Because yes. it has true. such a bad stigma of mother-in-laws and daughters. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's good. Rita says, Esther and Rahab, they both took risks. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they both took risks to save not only themselves, but, but others. others. That's good, yes. yes. Rahab stood on business. Yes. Okay? <laughs> As the young kids would say. <laughs> uh, her purposeful life, Mary, Jesus' mother, she stood yes. firm Miss the naysayers, and she knew her purpose, yes. understood that she was carrying purpose. Yes, yeah, that's, that's amazing. That I don't, part. I don't know if I could do that, you know, like yeah. carrying Jesus, yeah. you know, then that, raising him. Yeah, <laughs> that responsibility. And then, like, ultimately giving him up yes, to the world. Yes, yes. So. And it's hard for a parent to see their child die. So mm -hmm. if, she, if I were to see him on the cross, I don't even know how I would act, you yeah. know, like, that's yeah, crazy. That that's a responsibility. Well, sure. thank you for your responses. Okay, so we have a little game for you today. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> We're gonna keep it going this morning. Uh, so this uh, little trivia game, it's called Name That Female Female Artist. Okay. So we're gonna um, just kind of read some lyrics from some famous uh, Christian female artists, yeah. and we want to see if you guys can guess. You know who these artists are. I'll try not to sing the melody when I say it. So I can make it hard for you. Well, here's the first one. I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I've started from. Who do you think that is? I love that you read it like poem. <laughs> you know. Like a spoken word. 
<laughs> snap, 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 snap. <laughs> so good. Let us know who do you think this female artist is? I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I've started from. I don't know. This song, my mother used to play all the time. <laughs> I grew up so, on this yeah. song. <laughs> I grew up on this song. Oh, she already knew. Her Mary, Mary. Yes, her Mary, life. Mary. Kenny, Kenny says Mary, Mary, Mary. Yes, good job. Lorena, Mary, Mary. Yes, Jean. thank you. Okay, you guys know you know your female artist. Right. <laughs> All right, we got, a, we got another one for you guys. So the next one is, <clears throat> let me see if I could do it like Mike. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm desperately waiting mm. to be where you are. Yes. I'll cross the hottest desert. I'll travel near or far. Yes. Who is that female artist? <laughs> and it's like I like it when you actually break the lyrics down because yeah. it's like you'll cross the hottest desert. Yeah, the hottest desert. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Florida. And I know. <laughs> right. I mm. So, but I like reading lyrics because sometimes you really get to like focus on like the meaning of the words. Yeah, you know? exactly. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, Tasha Cobb. Yes, Tasha. Tasha. Yes, our, our good aunt Tasha. <laughs> yes. yes. Good job, yeah. you guys. Okay. Okay, let's see. We might make this a little bit harder. Yes, the last one. Okay. <laughs> you have led me through the fire. In the darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. Mm -hmm. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. Yes, okay. I love this song. Okay, that is powerful. Yes, very powerful. Who has been led through the fire? You know, like we really stop and just thank mm -hmm. God for the glory. That's amazing. And I love that the song says, I've known you as a father, but I've also known you as, as a, a friend, friend. Yeah. which is also very important. Because growing up, they said, I am not one of your little friends. Yeah. So, but Jesus was a father and a and friend. And a friend. Okay? <laughs> My mom would have, I'm not your friend. <laughs> right. Okay, so we see Naomi. Naomi. I'm guessing Naomi Rain is who you're saying there. Uh, CC, can okay, he says Kenny. CC? Let's see what else. CC wine, CC wine, okay. yes. Okay, Tasha. guys, I love that. Okay. <laughs> yes, that was CC wine. Yes, the goodness of God. The goodness, yes. Yeah, the song is the goodness of God. Good okay. job, you guys. Yes. All right, we appreciate y'all for interacting with us on that game. <laughs> we have one more. Okay. Okay. So these are not necessarily gospel artists, yes. but these are some prominent Black women in mm -hmm. our lives. And we just wanna want you to choose between the three and tell us why. Okay. So we have Whitney Houston, yes. Michelle Obama, and Oprah Winfrey. So out of the three of those, who would you choose? Yeah. And why? And why? Yeah. I'm gonna say Michelle Obama. Oh, I, 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 I knew you were gonna say Michelle. I just love her. I just love everything about her. All the other first ladies, they yeah. stood there just pretty way. Yeah. And she took action. She made lunch free. You know, she yeah. did so many different did a lot things. Of initiatives. She mm -hmm. was on a lot of the Disney shows, um, just supporting different things, going outside, yeah. being active. I love that. I yeah, love I love I love you so much, Obama. I would say I'm gonna go with a different person. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say Whitney Houston. Okay. Um, growing up, although I don't think I resemble her, and nor can I sing like her, <laughs> but people would say I look like a young Whitney Houston. Okay. And I just, I mean, I bodyguard. That's a classic. Yeah. Whitney's beautiful. Whitney is beautiful, yeah. and obviously her voice is amazing. So, how about you guys in the chat? Out of these three amazing women. Aaron says Michelle, Michelle Obama. Obama yes. yes, and why? Nadia yeah. says Michelle Obama. Yes. We love Sister Michelle. <laughs> Michelle is down to earth and genuine. And, and she, she loves people. She does. Yes. I, like I, I feel like she genuinely, I think with Michelle, she's able to like connect with women through mm -hmm. different generations. Like right. she connected with my mom's generation, my mm -hmm. generation. She's very relatable. Yeah, I feel. she is. Michelle, for sure. Michelle, yep. <laughs> um, Michelle, yes, ma'am. <laughs> a lot of Michelle trying to <laughs> coming in. Awesome. Whitney, okay. Rita says, Whitney was my favorite female artist of all time, yet Michelle not only understood the assignment, the assignment she conquered, she conquered it. it. Yes. Period. We love that. Michelle for Rita. president. Yes, right. <laughs> she is a great representation of black women and what they need. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is good. Yeah, that's true. Very accurate. Thank you so Mich much. Aaron She's says Michelle is inspirational. Yes. Definitely. Michelle, the one I know better. Yeah. Yeah. It's a safe choice. It, yeah. And I, I think honestly it's because she's a very relatable person. Yeah. yeah. So cool. yes. She's done a lot of great stuff. Okay. 
So we want to talk about what's going on mm -hmm. in your life and our lives. So we want to open it up to share testimonies. You can send your written testimony to engagement at online engagement at revisionchurchatlanta.org. It can be anonymous. We yes. don't have to say your name. You don't have to come up here to tell your story. But we do want to share how you have grown and how Jesus has blessed your life. Yes. And if you want to, you know, write us a, an email or yes. share a short video, you know, with your permission, we'll include that during yes. this segment just so that we can constantly, you know, just share how God is working in our lives. Yes. So, And you don't know something that you've gone through can help somebody else that's exactly. going through it right now. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so we're going to do just a little recap okay. um, of what's going on here at Revision. Last weekend, the Young Adult Ministry hosted a open mic, yes. spoken word. It was kind of a bit of karaoke, too, yeah. added in there. <laughs> um, and it was actually a really good night. We yes. had it here at the church. Um, we, we got a lot of talent here at yeah. Revision. I will say <laughs> some of these poems were amazing. We have some singers here as yeah. well. So you know, stay up to date with what's going on here. We have a lot of different activities that are happening mm -hmm. Saturday afternoon. Yes. So always visit our website. That's where we'll have, you know, all of our latest information for you guys. Yes. And we also have an, a text message. It'll show at the end of the sermon, but yes. you can always text that text message. It'll keep you up to date in the loop of what's going on. Also, immediately after church, there is a new start ministry. Mm -hmm. So if you are a part of that, then it'll be immediately after church. Yes, we'll be meeting uh, here after in the sanctuary after yes. church. Yes. Okay, so since we're in March and it is, you know, Women's History Month, we also have other things that are happening this month as well. We have our yearly fast that we do. Yeah. Uh, so this will be my, I think, my third time doing this fast okay. with the church. Yeah. Oh, gee. I, <laughs> <laughs> but, it, you know, it's a good thing because I think in the beginning of the year, we're all caught up on like, trying to like make our yeah. new year's resolutions, resolutions things yeah. that we want to do mm -hmm. so this time we're in march we're a little bit settled right. you know in some mm -hmm. things and this is a nice way to do you know a fast yeah. and it could be i mean we open it up to fasting from like instagram mm -hmm. social, media, social media netflix yeah. whatever it may be mm -hmm. but we have this fast that's going to start march the 10th through march the 30th yeah uh we're fasting from non-essentials to appreciate the essentials which i like um, and the pastors will share a little bit more about this today during our worship service. What do you think that you might be passing from this time? This time around, I I think I want to pass from, I'm going to say like coming home and like spending like that hour that I need. To, uh -huh. <laughs> I call it like my like time to like decompress. Yeah. 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 And I'll just like. Honestly, I'll put on Netflix or I'll be on like YouTube mm -hmm. and next thing you know, an hour and a half has gone by right. and I'm like, I could have used that time to like do something more productive. Yeah. So I want to switch it with like reading a book. I'm trying okay. to read a book a month, Okay. Okay. one book every month. That's so cool. I want to spend that like hour when I get home, mm -hmm. you know, just to like read and not be on my phone and not right. to like, you know, watch a program that, you know, it's nice to like not have to like yeah, think, think about anything. Mm -hmm. But I also want to, like, be edifying myself in yeah, some way. Yeah, of course. So, that's good. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I like that. No, that's really honest. Yeah. yeah I like How about that. you, Micah? I would say I'm going to fast from sugars. Okay. Um, sugar is definitely a drug. It's the, uh, the top that tier is my drug that's struggle. legal. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would just say refined sugars. Is what I okay, say. okay. So, you know, I put maybe I put a little brown sugar in my oatmeal. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. But necessarily baking cookies. Yeah. I'm going to kind of cut back on that. Cut back on that. Fine. It's good to say find healthier alternatives, but yeah. even still, you still end up caving. Yeah, I I don't have that willpower <laughs> yet. <laughs> I'll be struggling. Pray for me, please. But, but yeah, definitely. Yeah, so we have our fast that will be starting um, uh, March the 10th through March, March the 30th. 30th. So yes. stay tuned for more information about that. We also have the shift. Uh, so currently on Wednesday, March 6th at 7 p.m., we have a program that's called Can't We All Get Along? Mm -hmm. Building Relationships in the Workplace. Mm -hmm. So please stay tuned, set your alarms. If you're in that text message, they will notify you and yes. remind you. <laughs> and that'll be March the 6th at, at 7, 7 p.m. And you can find that on our YouTube channel. Yes. Uh, every month we have the shift on our YouTube channel. Yeah, and I love the shift. It's awesome. I do. I yeah. really I enjoy watching it. It's a good, like, you mid know, mid-week, yeah. mid like, mm -hmm pick me up yeah, you know and they're, the topics are always interesting they always mm -hmm. get like really good uh guest speakers yeah so it's always a good time we're also doing our small group it's a participation sign up 
So if you are looking for a godly community and connection, mm -hmm. then it's the time to sign up for small groups. Small group starts back this March 6th for six weeks. Oh, this March. I'm this sorry. March, yes. For six weeks. So you do not want to miss out. Simply sign up on our church website under groups tab and select small groups, or you can scan the QR code here. Yeah. And Micah, are you in a small group? I'm not in a small group. You come and join us. <laughs> I'm in one. I, I love I love small groups. Actually, when I first started coming here at Revision, that's the first thing I got involved in. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely love it. I feel like I'm in a group with like young adult women. Yeah. And just a lot of growth has happened yeah, um, in those meetings good. and just like discussing, like we go through a book and it's a very like nice time to like connect with other mm -hmm. women, but also like learn more about the Bible and like, right. you know, talk about like some conversations that we might sometimes not be comfortable, mm -hmm. you know, talking Same. about so openly yeah. with everyone. So I would definitely encourage you guys to join a small group. I mean, we have for, you know, older women mm -hmm. we have for young women we have for boys female like whatever like yeah. category you fall in uh we have a small group that's kind of dedicated to that. you yeah specific for that so okay. i would definitely encourage everyone to sign up for one mm -hmm. yes and we're doing early voting so if you haven't yet please make yourself a plan to vote Georgia voting begins on Monday, February 19th, so it's already started, yeah. <laughs> and will continue until Friday, March 8th, so if you have not already, please. Mm -hmm. During this time, voters can vote at any polling location in their county. For those who can't make it in person, you can also submit requests, absent, absent, absentee, absentee well, yeah. ballots through March 1st. Through March 1st, yes. Okay. And um, our RCA text message will be sent out to revision members just to kind of give you some more information on like, you know, your county, where you can vote at. And we yes. also have a ministry here that focuses on like education with yes. like, you know, social outreach and things of that nature. So definitely get plugged in and, um, you know, get more information on how you can vote and just learn more about the people running maybe in your county or your district. Yes. So we want to move on to our next segment, the let's chat about it. Yes. <laughs> so last sermon, well, I wasn't believe really, it was two sermons ago. Two sermons two, ago. Two weeks yeah. ago. Mm -hmm. So the pastor night, he talked about some of the power that we are given. A lot of things mm -hmm. that we ask for are in the physical. Yes. We ask for money, which is monetary, man-made. We ask mm -hmm. for a job, for a house. But the power that God gave us or gives us is supernatural. Yes. And the things that he he'll give us exceedingly and abundantly. Mm -hmm. So he was saying that there sometimes we don't know our powers and our strengths until we go through that turmoil. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. What is a power or strength, a supernatural power that you've given, whether it be patience, whether it be understanding, wisdom, that you didn't realize that you had yeah. until you went through something? Yeah, I mm, that's a good that's a good question. Um I would say a few years ago, my mom had a really bad health like issue. I'm sorry. And in that moment, I mean, we talk about patience, yeah. you know, when you like with your coworkers, if you have kids, mm -hmm. your, you know, your spouse, things of that nature, but being patient to wait for God to move mm -hmm. in those things where, you know, you've gone to the doctors, you, you've yeah. done all the tests you can do. And it's just like, you can't do anything. Right. I can't do anything. I have to wait for God to, you know, fix this matter. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that in that moment seeing, okay, you know, like, I can be a patient person, you yeah. know, I can have faith, really patience and faith connected to wait for God to move on this matter. Yeah. yeah. And that takes a lot of strength to actually give up the power, especially yeah. when you like being in control <laughs> like handle being stuff. Control. Yes, yes. It's just like you have to really wait on God and let God yeah. move. Yeah. And and for me, that shows me that only God can resolve that issue. Right. Like it mm -hmm. couldn't have been the doctor. Yeah. It couldn't have been mm -hmm. a nurse. Nothing. It's mm -hmm. only God who can move. And he'll do it every single time. He'll wait yes. to the very last second. The, yep. So you can't say that it was me or anybody yep. else. Or anybody right? else. Mm -hmm. That's, true. That's true. I would say for me, it's been understanding. Mm -hmm. So definitely as I've gotten older mm -hmm. and started to have children, it's been like a point of, there's a deeper understanding that I understand why certain stuff, certain adults did things when yeah. I was growing up that it was just like, why would you do that? It's like, okay, mm -hmm. I understand now. Okay. Not necessarily what you did was right, but yes. I understand why you did it because maybe you felt like 
that's all the only option uh-huh. that you have. Mm-hmm. And then understanding for myself to know that I understand that I went through this trauma. I understand yes. that I was hurt this way, but I don't have to project that. I don't have to spit that on and pass it to the next exactly. generation. Understanding, okay, same for my children. My children are younger, so mm-hmm. they can't always articulate what they want. Mm-hmm. Understanding, okay, what do you mean in this moment when you're really confused or you're upset or you're not talking? What does that mean? Yeah. And even when I speak to other people, sometimes people are rude to you Oh, and yeah. it's not even about it's you. It's not about you. It literally is yeah. about you. So understanding that it's not about me. Sometimes yeah. they're going through things and just trying to give them that love. So I would definitely say I feel like I've got to a level of understanding to know okay. that sometimes just it's just it is yeah. what it is. You yeah. know? And that's a good quality to have to be someone who is like just an understanding, willing yeah. to just not take something for face value. Right. And realizing that, you know what, everybody's having a hard time yeah. right now. Yeah. And just to extend kindness and grace to people. Yeah. Yeah. How about you guys in the chat? What is a supernatural strength? Dominique perseverance. says perseverance. That's good. Mm-hmm. Yes. To keep yeah. pushing even to, when it's hard. Yeah. That's a hard one for me. Yeah. Pers- uh, Marina per- says perseverance, God. Show enough has, has given oh, me. Show enough has given me. I was like, what? <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you, Lorena. <laughs> but thank you for your responses. Okay? Yeah, thank you for sharing, guys. <laughs> and then I do want to say something else. What are some strengths that you actually wish to have? Sometimes we're wishing to have mm-hmm. strengths and we look around and realize we already have them. Yeah. So what are some strengths that you wish to have more of? Patience. Pearl yes. says patience. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I That's feel like patience one. is one of those things that it's like ongoing. I don't think yeah. like you can ever like fully have right. You know, patience. Yeah. Like, but you know what? God doesn't give you patience. He gives you options or opportunities, opportunities to be patient. Opportunities to be patient. Yeah. yeah. So this, Very you know, God is, God is really good. He's amazing. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. I just want to say thank you for just tuning in to yes. Live at Revision Live. We just, thank you for interacting with us. Yes, too this we love it. We love hearing your responses. We hope that you are revived, renewed, and refreshed yes. and enjoy the sermon. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
You are loved. You are accepted. You belong. Welcome to Revision Church. Good morning, Revision, and happy Sabbath. Thank you, First Lady. Good morning, Revision, and happy Sabbath. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Are you living? Are you breathing? Can you see? Are you able to move your body? There are some people who did not wake up this morning. So if you woke up this morning, if he started you on your way, you have a reason to rest on your feet. You have a reason to give him praise because you're blessed. You woke up with blessings that someone else did not. This is not a show. Everybody has to participate in order for you to receive your blessing and in order for you to press into the spirit of the Lord. So someone turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you blessed? That's the wrong person. That's the wrong person. Look to somebody else and say, neighbor, are you blessed? Sing bless, 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 b
Anybody blessed here today? Hey, come on, anybody blessed here today? Amen, amen. Listen, we want to welcome you to worship here today. For those of you all who are in the building and those of you all who are tuning in online worshiping us, we want to welcome you to Revision Church Atlanta. If you're happy to be here today, just say amen. 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 Go ahead and turn to your neighbor and look at your neighbor and say, I'm happy that you're here. All right, go ahead and turn to your other neighbor and say, I'm happy that you're here. Awesome, awesome. Listen, we are so grateful that you all decided to worship with us today. We truly believe that God has something amazing for us in store today. Listen, God has been doing some amazing things within our community. As you all know, just a couple weeks ago, we celebrated five years. Come on. And God has continued to move in our community. As you all probably heard at Live at Revision, we have a fast coming up. Yes, we have a fast coming up from March 10th to March 30th. Everybody remember that day? March 10th to March 30th, we have our yearly communal fast. And this time we'll be fasting from non-essentials to appreciate the essentials. Mm. 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 Talk, tell us about that, Pastor Gene. What you mean by that? So non-essentials are, you know, that little sweet that you picked, you pick up on your way home from work. Oh. Oh. Maybe that extra uh, body wash that you don't really oh, need. Not the body wash. Yes, uh, or that extra okay. perfume. I am guilty of that. Okay. That I just see and I'm like, oh, I think I need that, but I really don't. I really don't. So, Pastor Gina, I do have a confession. I am that guy that when I go through the register, uh, you know those, like, they got the candies and the knickknacks? They, I'm, I'm, I'm held hostage by those things. They get you? Especially at, like, Home Goods where they have all the random stuff. Mm. Yeah, 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 random just gummies that I've never seen before but look so good. Yeah, or that dollar section in Target. Oh, the dollar I, I, section. I fall to it. But so, those are non-essentials. Non-essentials that we want to fast from this month, from the 10th to the 30th. So we hope that you'll participate in this fast. You may be like, um, I don't know. That seems a little hard. I'm used to like water fast or food fast, uh -huh. but we really want to challenge everyone here to fast from the non-essentials, to appreciate the essentials that God has blessed us all with. Absolutely. And over the next week, we're actually going to be providing some criteria, some examples of what a non-essential fast looks like. We also want to let you all know that this upcoming Wednesday at 7 o'clock, we will have The Shift, and it will be online. You can watch it on Facebook and on YouTube at our channel. And we'll be talking about, can't we all just get along, talking about making friends in the workplace. Making friends in the workplace. Anybody struggle to make friends in the workplace? Oh, everybody, everybody, just extroverts here. Everybody's just making friends in the workplace. I love it. So... That's this Wednesday on The Shift, we're going to be talking about making friends in the workplace. And so we encourage you to tap into that and watch that. 
We also want to let you all know that small groups is coming back. All right. Small groups is coming back. If you participated in a small group before, you know that it's an amazing experience being able to connect with people within our community and even people with with um, on the outside of our community as well. And so we want to encourage you small group signups. The QR code is on the screen and it's also on our website as well. And so we encourage you to go ahead and begin signing up for our small groups that's going to be starting very, very soon. And as many of you know, we have a community service project every single month. And this month, in honor of Women's History Month, we are doing a hygiene drive. Mm, yes. Okay. Last year, we did a feminine hygiene product drive. And this year, we're doing a hygiene drive specifically for women refugee in Atlanta. Okay. So we want to care for them. We want to provide new toothbrushes, new uh, shampoos, conditioner, toothpaste, all of these products to help them transition into their new life here. So throughout the whole month of March, every time we're in person, there's going to be a bin in the lobby where you can just bring those things, place them, and we'll be donating to, once again, refugee women here in Atlanta. Ooh, awesome. I'm so excited for that initiative. And listen, here at Revision, we believe that we are the hands and feet of Jesus and that we do that through our community service, but we also do that through our giving as well. As you all know that our tithe goes to support what we do globally, but our offering goes to support what we do locally here in the local area of Atlanta. And so we encourage you to give. Our ways of giving are on the screen, and so we encourage you to continue giving. And we want to say thank you for your continued giving. Um, because of you all and your continued giving, that's why we're able to do the things that we do here at Revision. Amen. And so this is a time where we want to transition into our prayer moment. And I'm going to have Pastor Gina lead us in our prayer moment. Yeah, before we pray, um, I was just reading throughout the Bible this week, and I saw that many times when Jesus was on the way to go about his business or on the way to the synagogue, on his way to church, he would stop and perform a miracle of healing for his people. On his way to church, he would stop and heal a daughter, heal a son, so that they could receive healing before he went to the house of the Lord. And today, I want to really allow us to pray over healing for everyone today. I want yeah. you to turn to your neighbor and just share what it is you may need healing for, whether it's emotional, physical, even spiritual. Just turn to your neighbor and take a few minutes just to pray over them. Maybe someone new, maybe someone a little down the aisle, but just turn to someone and ask, what do you need prayer for? What kind of healing do you need this morning? And just take a minute to pray for them. Let us lift up each other in community and pray for one another.
invite you to stand as we just pray together. Let's pray. God, we are so thankful that you are a healing God, that you care for us spiritually, physically, emotionally, and you want to bring about healing to your people. So God, even in this time, even in this moment, for those online and in person, we pray and ask that you would touch us all in a special way, that you would touch and bring about healing, restoration, rejuvenation, Lord, everything that is needed, Lord, we pray that you would bring it about to our lives starting today. God, not tomorrow, but we call on you today, Father. We call on you today, Abba, to be our healer. Lord, a lot of us are feeling pain in our body and we need you to alleviate it, God. We know that you and the Bible can just touch someone and bring about that uh, freedom of pain. God, we know someone who may be feeling pain emotionally, God. With one touch, you can bring about healing. You can bring about joy and peace to their life, God. And we pray for those who are just even feeling hurt emo uh, spiritually, God. There's something that hurts when it comes to thinking about you and being close to you. So God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would send your love to bring about healing. Through this week, they would see your love in a great way. They would see your love in a grand way that they will not be able to deny that it is God that has showed up for me and has showed that he has loved me. God, bring about the healing that we need holistically. We believe that you will do this, Lord, and we pray a special prayer for those who are grieving God who have lost a father, who have lost a mother, who have lost a sibling, a friend, God. We pray that you would bring about healing in their hearts as they mourn, as they weep, God. You are ever present and you will be their help. So God, we stand with faith that you will heal starting today, here and now. In the name of Jesus, we all pray and say amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. At this time in our worship experience, we want to invite all of our children to transition to Children's Church. Our children's ministry leaders are ready to receive them. We also ask that you walk with them as well. And so if you have some children, please escort them and check them in for us, amen. is continuing to grow. Amen. Oh, come on. I don't think you all heard me. I'm so grateful today because our church is continuing to grow. Come on. You all can do better than that. That God is moving in our community. And so today I'm so excited to invite our assistant clerk to come forward as she does the second reading for a host of new members. Good morning, church. Good morning. So I'll be doing the second reading today, March 2nd, for uh, our new members coming in. So from Decatur SDA Church in Decatur, Georgia, we have Chelsea Houston, Ferline Hunter, amen, yes, and Victoria Ruff. From Campbellton SDA Church in Campbellton, California, we have Andrea Valentin. And from New Life International SDA Church in Jacksonville, Florida, we have Ashley Mays. And finally, from Restoration Praise Center Church in Bowie, Maryland, we have Lauren Reynolds. Amen. If your name was read, if you could just stand up. If you're here in the building today, if your name was read, if you could just stand up for us. At this time, we would like to call for a motion. Is there a motion to accept the second reading of all of these names? Okay, is there a second? All those in favor say amen. 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 Can we go ahead and just celebrate our new members today? Amen. 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 
Listen, church, we encourage you as we continue to celebrate, let's worship the Lord together in spirit and in truth as our praise team comes forward. a special friend who is visiting from Decatur. Her name is Natalia Carr. Oh, yeah. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's what you're going to be saying when she finishes singing. <laughs> um, Natalia is one of the most kind persons or people that I've met. Um, she has a passion for ministry. And um, if you know anything about music ministry, um, it's, it's something that is it's not supposed to be done as if it is a job, but it's our commitment. It's our commitment to ministry. And so we have a privilege once more to worship and to have Natalia here. She has a true passion for ministry, for serving. She's 28, she's a graduate of Andrews University. And so we are so happy to have her. She's gonna minister for us and we hope you all enjoy, amen. Amen, amen, happy Sabbath revision. Happy Sabbath revision. Turn to your neighbor and say happy Sabbath. Turn to the other neighbor and say happy Sabbath. Turn to the neighbor behind you and say you look good neighbor. You look good neighbor. The Lord is good and he's worthy to be praised. You are God and you're in control.
many of you know that God is able? We won't stop praising him. We're not going to stop right here, right now. We're going to continue to praise him. I don't know what you came in here carrying, but it's just like Natalia said. You don't know what it took for some of us to be here today. It took us to work our faith. It takes us to work our faith daily to know that God is able to do exactly what he said he would do and more. And I don't know about any of you, but I'm walking in a promise. I'm expecting a promise. I will, I will live to see the report of the Lord because he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask, think, and or imagine. And so whatever it is that you're carrying right here, right now, sing this song with us. Sing through it until you believe that he's able and let him show you just how able and how marvelous he is. He's a good God. Exceedingly Abundantly Above All you could ask or think Sing with me According to The power That worketh in you
Help me say hi. 
felt his spirit in this place today I said haven't you felt the move of the spirit of God already oh, we bless his name thank you praise team for being obedient following the leading and the moving of the spirit today as we've gathered for worship and for the word I'm grateful for all of those who have come, those who are visiting, especially our first time guests, visitors. We won't ask you to stand, but we're grateful for your presence. And we know that it's not just coincidence or circumstance that brings you here to Revision Church Atlanta, but God does indeed have a word for us today. Solicit your prayers. I'm under the weather today, not feeling my best, but that worship helped me, amen. So I need you to pray my strength today as I fight whatever this is. And I believe that I'm on divine assignment because there is indeed a word as we start a new series today called Gotta Have It, learning how to be content. The Lord laid it on first Stephanie's heart, my wife's heart, about the fact that one of the issues the church faces today, besides the enemy's attack from, the, from every angle, is the fact that there is an internal battle in every one of us to be content where we are and with what we have. So for the next three weeks, I'll preach and Stephanie will preach and we will dive into what it is to be content. I do hope that you'll join us for the entirety of the series. The way it is designed is not for you to just hear one, but to put all of them together. Today, I want to start us off by laying a foundation for us to understand what it is to live in contentment. And then as we've mentioned, we've got a fast coming up and that fast will go right along with our series in contentment as we have named that fast, Less is More, so that we can come to understand what it is to be content with what God has given us. So we do hope that you will pray and that you will plan, whether you're a member or not, we invite you to be part of our Less Is More Fast, which will begin next weekend. 
If you're ready for the word, shout yes. All right, now I told you you got to help me today. If you're ready for the word, shout yes. Would you stand to your feet? And I want to read in your hearing Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, I'm grateful to my pastoral staff who we switched some things around because of my ailment today and they were able to be right on on the job. We got an amazing staff, don't we? Amen. We praise God for them. Philippians chapter 4. I want to draw your attention to verses 10 down through 13. And today I'm going to read and preach from the New Revised Standard Version. Usually you know I come from the ESV, but today we're from the NRSV. For those of you who are at home, we invite you to join us as well for this reading of the Word. Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 13. I rejoice in the Lord greatly, Paul says, that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to be in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Somebody ought to say amen. Verse 12, once again for our sermonic spotlight, just the first part, I know what it is to have little. And I know what it is to have plenty in any and all circumstances. I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, having plenty and being in need. Today I want to preach as we start this series, I got to have it. I got to have it. Just shout that. I got to have it. I'll help you know what that it means. Lord God, help us. Your word says that when you send your preached word out, it will not return unto you void. So Lord, do what only you can do. Ah, in my human weakness, make me strong. In in our moral weakness, God, make us strong. Speak now. And we thank you in advance for what you are about to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. I got to have it. You don't have to be in church very long or to be a church member in order to have heard this seemingly motivational phrase, this text that seems like a personal affirmation. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You don't even have to be a deep Bible student or one who reads the Bible every day to have at least not heard some version of this phrase quoted, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. This statement about being able to do all things has been widely applied to all kinds of situations. It's been used to boost ourselves up. It's been used to lift ourselves up. It's been used to motivate ourselves when motivation is waning. I can do all things 
through Christ which strengthens me. And we apply it to all types of things. I can pass the test in school. I can overcome sickness, ailment, and disease. I can get through this hardship. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And the power of these motivational words, these words that are lifted from the pages of Holy Writ are indeed applicable to so many different situations. However, I've told you before, and I'll say it again, that a text taken out of context can oftentimes allow us to end up in places where God did not necessarily want us to be. A text taken out of context, sometimes we risk the danger of accessing the power of that passage because we don't understand the context of it. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me is not just a text to apply when you're going through hardship. It's not just a text that helps you get through difficulty. It's not just a text that you recite in the morning to get you through the rigors and rhythms of the day. But church, I can do all things through Christ is specifically placed in the context of having to deal with the issue of contentment. The context is contentment. It's not I can do all things through Christ so I can just get over this. It's I can do all things through Christ so I can learn what it is to be okay in any situation I'm in. Now, in order to give you the context, you must understand that Paul is writing this letter to the church in Philippi, and it is Paul who is thanking them in verse 10. He is happy. He says, I rejoice. I am grateful. I am celebrating that you are now checking on me, that you're checking in to make sure my needs are met. Now, this is significant because what Paul is doing, you must understand, is he is a missionary. Paul is one who goes from town to town, city to city, city, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it took financial gifts of others to help him do his ministry. He was, in a real sense, bivocational. He was not a full-time, fledged apostle like the others. He was one who was known to be a tent maker by day, but spent his leisure time and spent most of his time focused on preaching the gospel. So the financial gifts, don't miss this, of people, these benefactors, if you will, allowed him to be able to fund his public ministry. He did not get a check from the conference. There was no denomination or conference to support his ministry financially. He would go from town to town preaching based on the gifts that people gave him. So when he writes to the church in Philippi, he says, thank you. I haven't received anything from you for a while to support my ministry. And he says, but I understand because it was not because you did not want to give. You did not have an opportunity. See, for there were those who were blocking the gifts and blocking access of the gifts getting to Paul. Please don't miss this, that what Paul needed, other people and circumstances were becoming obstacles for Paul to get what he needed. Do you not know that every now and again when God is trying to get something to you that there are people who will stand in the way to block that which God wants to get to you? And so Paul says, I'm grateful that that's been removed. I know that you had a mind to give to me, but now you've got an opportunity. He says, and I just want to thank you for the gift, but watch the shift. He says, but please understand in verse 11, Paul tells them, I'm not in need. Now, don't, don't miss what's happening I told you that Paul needs money in order to fund his public ministry. 
But when he thanks them for what they are giving, he says, I am thanking you because now you have an opportunity to do what you were always planning to do. You have access to give, but please understand, I'm not bringing this to your attention because I'm needy. Mm. I like this. Uh, he says, yes, I need money to be able to take care of the ministry, but I'm not rejoicing because your need, what you're sending me, will fulfill my need. Because he says, I've learned uh, to be content with whatever I have. I'm right here in verse 11. I'm not referring to being in need. Please don't, don't miss what's happening. In the physical, in the natural, Paul does have needs. He needs the money to be able to fund the ministry. But when they send it, he says, please understand, I'm not rejoicing because you're meeting a need. He said, I've learned in whatever situation I'm in to be content. Paul tells them he isn't needy. He was content with whatever he had. See, he has needs, but he's not needy. And there is a distinct difference between the two. Paul said, I have learned what it is to have little. And I've learned what it is to have a lot. So please understand what you are doing for me is actually probably more beneficiary. You're more of the beneficiary of this gift than I am. Because I've got something in me that allows me to not be disturbed by what I have or do not have. Paul says, I've learned what it is to have little. Some people don't know what it is to have little. Well, you know what it is to have little, but you might not be okay with having little. Some people, when they have little, they get jealous and envious. They start looking at what you have and plotting on how they can get what you have. Some people get covetous. They covet. That is, that they want to make sure that they can take you out so they can have access to what it is you enjoy. They start lying and scheming to take what you have. Do I have some witnesses here? Or, 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 or when people don't know how to deal with less, they start complaining incessantly so that they are not grateful for what's in their hand because they are mourning what they don't have yet in their hand. But yet our ancestors knew what to do with little. Uh, Jay-Z said it this way, they took old food and made it soul food. Your grandmother, she knew how to do that, didn't she? How to take just a little bit and make it stretch. How to be grateful with the little that they have. See, Paul is sharing with the church, as I'm sharing with you today, as we set up this series for the next few weeks, that contentment is a necessary spiritual gift and discipline that the church needs in order to make it in these last days. Because we are being tempted on every side, outside of the church and inside the church, not to be content, satisfied, satiated with that which we have. And it is what drives us to do, watch this, more than what God asks us to do. It's what drives us to change the rhythm of our schedules, to chase things that God wants to give you. It's what causes us mm, to rupture relationships in the name of chasing a certain goal. It's what makes us chase clout above connection. It's what causes, well, y'all don't feel me today. I told you I need you to help me. It's what, it's what causes us to make last things first and first things last. Contentment is this, uh, this thing that eludes most people of faith. 
because we have been taught by the world that enough is never enough and we've been taught in the church a false sense of prosperity that says I need to have everything I desire and everything I can speak of and I can just reach up in faith and grab it. Now it makes for a good song but it's bad theology. Because if you trust and serve the God, y'all ain't feeling me today. If you trust and know the God that I serve, the God of heaven, how many of you know he does open up windows of blessings and pour you out what you ask and even what you need and even what you desire? But the same God who opens up the window is the same God who also closes that window every now and again. And what God needs to get, how me, God, what God needs to get us to is a place where it don't matter if we're getting the blessings we ask for or we're getting the bless or we're not receiving the blessings we think we need because now our worship is no longer dependent on how God is moving, how God is blessing, what God is giving, how God is protecting. Hey, our strength, our faith is in the Lord. Oh, if you're with me, shout yes. He's trying to teach us contentment. Um, the temptation of having little, hear me, because Paul says, I've learned how to have little. The temptation of having little is that you have to break rules or break relationships to get what you need. See, when, when this is, this is the, the, the curse of poverty is that when, watch this, I not only have little, but when I have a poverty mentality, it allows me then to justify breaking rules. So I will steal, I will lie, I will be conniving and manipulative to my fellow human being in order to scam from them what God has not given me. Ooh, this is why so many people are takers and not givers because they think in terms of lack. If I have little and they have much, now I've got to manipulate the situation so that I can get from them what I don't have. But the temptation ooh, of, that, of that kind of thinking is that it makes us believe the only way to get what we don't have is to take it from another finite human being. What we are missing is that when we manipulate situations to get and take from other people what they have, we are simply hmm, accessing a resource that is not ours instead of accessing the source who we have connection to. So then why is it? Why would I need what you drive? Why is it that I would try to get the money that you have? Why is it do I need to scheme in order to get your position in the corporate space? Why is it that I need to try to take your spouse when I'm not happy with mine? No, 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 no. I understand that's just a resource, but I have connection to the source. And how many of you know when you have connection to the source, every Everything you need will be supplied. Paul said, I know what it is to deal with little, but I also know what to do and to deal with plenty. Because some people don't know how to deal with having plenty. They get arrogant. They get proud. They get self-sufficient. Uh, well, some people, huh, we keep asking for more money. We want more blessings. We want more things. Some of us can't handle it. Now, I want you to understand this is not an anti-wealth message. God wants some people to be wealthy. God blesses some people with means in order so that they might bless other people. 
But please understand the Bible talks about from Old Testament to New Testament that some people can't handle wealth. They can't handle having plenty. And Paul says, I've learned not only how to deal with a little, I've learned how to have a lot and not let it go to my head. Because some people have means, and having means make them act mean. You ever met them folk who will remind you of how much they have and in, in, in a sense remind you of what you don't have in comparison? Why? Because they see their plenty as privilege so that they can look over people. But the other thing about having plenty is that, ah, uh, the allure of having a lot is that it's never really enough. Having plenty without contentment can sometimes predispose you to greed and selfishness that poisons the soul. So there ain't nothing wrong with having money. There's even nothing wrong with being able to make more money. But please understand the temptation of having plenty is that you have to break rules or rupture relationships in order to get there. That's what's wrong with the culture of the corporate world that we bring into these sacred spaces. Is that in the corporate culture, I might have to step on your neck in order to get to where I'm going. And what I really don't understand is how black people who have been historically and systematically oppressed can get a little bit of plenty, get some means, and then forgot where they came from. And then you got a whole slew of people when you came from the hood, you forget the hood and don't ever go back to help people in the hood. You forget all your people because you have arrived. You're now sitting at the table. Now you're celebrating the fact that you're there when others just need you to hold the door open. He says, I've learned how to have plenty. I've learned, but I don't let lack or plenty go to my head. What Paul is talking about is contentment. If you're still with me, shout yes. For the purposes of this series, I want you to understand what Paul is explaining here. Contentment is not a buzzword in our culture. Contentment is not something you hear about. In fact, when I was doing research on this, I tried to go to the psychologists, the behavioral scientists, those who understand and study, even sociologists, understanding the human mind and, and how we deal with each other and what means most to us. And it's funny, there's a lot of studies on happiness, but not on contentment. And it is interesting that... I believe the reason why there's not much data on contentment and there's a lot on happiness is because happiness uh, is often tied to external circumstances and situations so that it can be measured in certain moments. But contentment is what they call, watch this, a low arousal state. Which means that when you are content, it's not something that's based on a high arousal environment. It's not that something really big happened to you. It's not that something really spectacular happened to you. When you're content, it's low arousal. Meaning it doesn't matter if I'm up or down, I'm okay, I'm good, I'm satiated. And I want you to understand this contentment if you're taking notes here's the def definition of contentment we're going to use throughout this series contentment is knowing what you need and knowing those needs will be met contentment is knowing what you need and knowing those needs will be met when I'm content and this is why there's not much data on contentment because huh, it's not natural, it's supernatural. It's not in the physical or even in the mental. But contentment starts with your spirit. Contentment is knowing what you need in your spirit. 
and then knowing those needs will eventually be met. See, let me ask you a question. Do you actually know what you need? Do, do you actually, I, I know, food, water, protection, gas in the car, a job, do, but do you actually know what you need? You need to be loved by God. You need to be kept by your creator. You need to have a sense of purpose in this life. But when we think of needs, we often think of more money, uh, a promotion on the job. I, I need to make sure I got my health care and my insurance. I want you to understand that sometimes what you think is a need is just an appetite. Um, I'll ask you again, do you really know what you need? Sometimes what you need is not more money, just more trust. Sometimes what you need is not more friends. It's less friends that you can trust. Sometimes what you need is not more things, but more connection to people you can trust. See, you don't need, you don't always need more. The trick of the enemy, oh, God, help me to preach this. The trick of the enemy as it relates to contentment is to make you feel like huh, what you want is what you need. Come here, Esau, and testify. There's a story of a man named Esau whose twin brother was Jacob. And Jacob was the domesticated one. Esau was the hunter. And one day Esau comes out from hunting. Watch this. He has been hunting. He has been hunting and his brother has been cooking. And when he comes in from hunting all day, he's hungry. And his brother's been cooking and he walks by. His brother's got some stew in the pot and Esau wants something to eat. He says, give me something to eat. And he, Jacob now manipulates the situation and says, well, if you want this pot of stew, you're going to have to give me something great. And right here, Esau makes the grave mistake that most of us do. And that is Esau wants the stew, but because his appetite is so out of control, he has now defined appetite as need so much to the point that he says if you don't give it to me I'm going to die Woo, help me to preach this Holy Ghost some of you have so confused your appetite for something and someone that you think if you don't get it you gonna die and so, God, you have gone after things that were before you, but they were not for you. Because your appetite got so out of control that you conflated appetite with need. He says, please give me this stew or I'm going to die. And here's what the enemy does. I'll trade you this moment of stew for your life, your life of power. He traded in his birthright that meant all the wealth, all the privilege, all the prosperity of his father for a moment of stew. And how many of us sitting here, you ain't got to shout right here, but how many of us sitting here today have gone through that same situation where our appetite got so out of control, we thought we needed her. You didn't need her, you just wanted her. And because you wanted her so much, your mind tricked your body into believing it was an essential need. But date her for a few months and you'll discover it was really a want. Not a need. You thought you needed that baby. 
God is taking too long and he ain't give me the right one so I'm just going to go ahead and have me a baby anyhow. I ain't got to be married. I don't have to do it the way God told me to do. It's a need. Uh, my cock is ticking. I got to do it. Yeah, you thought you needed it. was really a desire. And contentment, oh God, is when I understand that not everything I want is something that I need. It might just be a bowl of stew. Can I tell you what contentment is not? Contentment is not settling. I want you to hear me. This doesn't mean that you settle for less than what God wants for you. Contentment is not settling for mediocrity. Contentment is not settling for abuse and misuse. Contentment is not settling in a toxic relationship and just saying, well, I'm just going to sit here because this is where God's got me. No, 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 no. That is not contentment. What it does mean is that your sense of self Watch this, is not rooted in how other people treat you. So contentment means I'm not relying on you to make me happy. I'm not relying on you to give me peace. You didn't give me my peace. I'm not going to share my peace with you. And when I get ready to leave, I'm taking my peace with me. Mm, can I preach it like I feel it? Contentment, hear me, is not a lack. It's not about a lack of ambition. It is about not having a mindset of lack. Ooh, I just said something. I'm not telling you not to go for the promotion. This doesn't mean you don't invest more of your money to grow that money so that you can have more of what God blesses you with. Contentment doesn't mean you don't go back to school, my brother, my sister, and get that degree you've been talking about doing. It doesn't mean that you don't push yourself forward, develop yourself, and become better. What contentment does mean, though, is that your sense of being is not negatively affected if you don't get the promotion. It means that your peace is not dependent on a good return on your investment. It means who, that your joy is not dependent on whether everything goes right in that relationship because contentment is not settling for less nor is it a lack of ambition. It's rooted in something internally. So he says in verse 12, says, I've learned to be content. I, I, I know what it is to have little. I know what it is to have plenty. And then he says, in any and all circumstances. Oh, God. In any situation, I've learned to be content. See, being content in the different seasons of life. Paul says, I know what it is to have little and plenty. His experience has taught him a lot of things. But here's the thing about contentment. Having little doesn't mean that you don't have what you need. Having plenty doesn't mean that there's something you're not in need of. See, what contentment does is it teaches you to take an inventory of your life to see what it is you already have. Because, ooh, I'm gonna show you in a minute, what contentment does is gives you a different perspective about what need is and about what you already have. Okay, y'all, y'all, let, let me illustrate. So Jesus brings the 12 disciples to a place one day, he's been preaching, Crowds in their thousands have gathered. It starts getting late into the evening, and one of them comes and says, Master, we got to send these people away because it's dinner time. We've kept them all day. What do we do? He says, no, we're not sending them away. Let's see what we got. 
Now, what the disciples say is we've looked at everything we have. And we don't have enough to feed these many people. But what Jesus in this moment is getting ready to teach them one of the secrets of contentment. He says, search through all the crowd. He says, search around and see what you got. Because the little that is in the crowd is going to be enough. They didn't realize that the lad's lunch would not watch this meet their need. They come, they say, well, there's five loaves, two fishes. This is all we got. And in the human psyche, we would say, well, God, how are you going to do this? Feed thousands of people with just five loaves and two fish. But what they didn't understand was this. Huh. The resources they gathered didn't matter to Jesus. All that mattered is that they brought the resources they had to Jesus. Okay. They, I think they missed their shout, David. See, when they brought the five loaves and two fishes, they're saying it's not enough. Jesus is saying, oh yeah, this, this by itself will never be enough. I didn't send you out there to get everything you needed. I sent you out there to count what you had. Ooh, wait a minute. Because what I'm trying to get you to understand is you don't need to identify everything you need. You just need to take an inventory of what you already have. And then if you give me everything you already have, that's all I need to meet your need. Can I preach this like I feel it? And that is that God doesn't need you to give him a list of everything you don't have. He says, bring what you do have to me. Because I want you to start getting a mindset that whatever you got, I will multiply and I wonder, do I have some witnesses here where God took your five loaves, where God took your two fish? Oh, let me come a little bit closer. Where God took your two cents, where God took your two minutes, where God took, took your two moments of sanity and multiplied it. So you not only survived the day, but you, you made a, a magnificent victory of the day because God is able. Mm, I said God is able to do a whole lot with little. He just needs you to check on what you already have. So you, you, you have five loaves. You were complaining about what you didn't have, but you have five loaves. See, their problem is they're looking at the multitude. Five loaves won't cut it. They were looking at the wrong thing. Because five loaves don't mean nothing when you're talking to the bread of life. Two fish don't mean nothing when you're talking to the one huh, who spoke fish into existence. He says, don't you know your resources are never what I needed? What I needed was your faith. Faith multiplies loaves. Faith multiplies fish. And I wonder if I've got anybody here. You don't see where the money's coming from. You don't see where tuition is coming from. You don't see when the promotion's gonna happen. You don't see when the healing's coming. Mm, but do I have somebody here that knows? I can't see it but I know it in my spirit. My needs shall be met. Therefore, I am content. I I'm just about through. My needs are met. He says, because I've learned the secret. Y'all ready for the secret? And then I'll get out your way. Y'all ready for the secret? He says, I've learned the secret to having plenty and having lack, to being full and being hungry. And then he says the text we've taken out of context. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. What you saying? He says, I can get through any circumstance 
and still be satisfied with God because of Jesus on the inside who strengthens me. This strength is not a mental strength. This strength is not based on your ability to affirm and motivate yourself. This strength is a spiritual work where your spirit knows something your mind can't comprehend. When down in your spirit you know everything gonna be all right. Nudge your neighbor and say everything's gonna be all right. But you got to get that in your spirit. It's something that happens internally. So as I take my seat, let me tell you what Paul was saying. He was saying, uh, I can do, I can deal with all things externally because of what I've got internally. That's what he's saying. I can do all things out here because of Christ who strengthens me in here okay so I'm on a cruise ship many many years ago I haven't been on a cruise for a while but was on a cruise ship with the family and friends we having a good time the weather starts getting a little stormy and I'm watching the elements I'm watching the waves I'm watching the thunder but the boat isn't moving I'm trying to figure out how the external circumstance of the storm is not rocking the boat. It's rocking the water, but not rocking the boat. I'm trying to figure out what it is that's happening until I understood that cruise ships have something they call hydraulic active thin stabilizers. What is that? I'm glad you asked. It's something that, watch this, is put on the inside of the boat. But when a storm happens externally, what's inside is released under the water. So I couldn't see the stabilizers, but because it was something on the inside, Activated by the storm on the outside. The stabilizer, stabilizers took us through the storm and we cruised through the storm. Can I tell you what God is doing? He's putting stabilizers in you. Something in your spirit uh, that gives you joy uh, when you ought to be crying. Uh, which gives you peace uh, when you ought to be fretting. Uh, which gives you praise when you ought to be complaining. How does he do it? It's easy. When you think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's already done for you, when you count the inventory of the blessings that got you this far, you can praise him amidst the storm because contentment is stabilizing. The water might be rocking, but he stabilizes. Bills might need to be paid, but he stabilizes. Folks are talking about you, but he stabilizes. I wish I had a witness that would help me close this sermon. Do I have anybody here that knows that God will stabilize you? That God will stabilize you? I might be going through, but he stabilizes me. So I got to have it. What's the it? I got to have contentment. I don't need the money. I don't need the promotion right now. If he says no, I'm all right. Because as long as I got King Jesus, I said, as long as I got King Jesus, I know everything that I ever needed will be supplied. So somebody ought to close this sermon praising God in advance that your need will be met. I did not say that you praise him when you get it but contentment pushes you to praise him until you get it I shout right now cause I know everything will be 
supply. Contentment. Contentment is that I know what my needs are. I know the difference between my appetite, my desires, and what it is that I need. And I know, not by evidence, not by sight, not by my bank account, I just know all my needs will be met. That's why Paul said, thank you for the gift. But I'm not needy. Because I know all my needs will be supplied. I need some people to meet me at the altar who's saying, Pastor, over the next few weeks, I need God to strengthen me with contentment. I need that, that gift on the inside that allows me to be okay with what you've already given me. I'm tired of running after, chasing after. I'm tired of pushing away the most important things so that I can chase the very thing that you can give me in an instant. I want to learn how to be content. I want to learn how to be content where I am so that as I strive for more and better, I don't lose my soul over more. Make me content with what I have. Make me content in my marriage. Make me content with what you've already blessed me with. Hear this church, because if you can get to contentment where you are, he can trust you with where he's taking you. Don't miss the revelation. One of the reasons, listen, shh, listen. One of the reasons why you haven't received more is because you're not content where you are. And God cannot trust you with more if you are not content with what you have. But today, we're believing God that over these next few weeks, we are going to receive the spiritual gift of contentment. I promise you it will radically change your life. The way you think, the way you date, the way you relate, what you chase, it'll change your schedule. It'll change your agenda. Because if I'm satisfied here, I don't need to chase you to get happy. I'm going to pray. Now, God, Yahweh, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you that we have the ability, the capacity, the access to contentment. God, we don't want just moments of fleeting joy or happiness. We don't want to just feel good in certain circumstances. God, we want to be stabilized internally so we can deal with the things we cannot control externally. God, do that spiritual work in our spirit so that we know what our needs are and we know they will be met. 
I pray for every person in this building, every person online who's in the digital altar. They're, they're saying, that's me too. I, I need this gift of contentment so I can stop complaining, stop worrying, stop fretting, stop wringing my hands, stop losing sleep and being stressed. I want to be satisfied in you. So God, do this work like only you can do. And we thank you in advance for what you will do. We praise you now. Needs that are not yet met will be met in due season. But we don't serve you because our needs will be met. We serve you because you're a wonderful God all by yourself. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Listen. Come on, put your hands together. We praise God. There are those of you, Pastor Yusuf is going to come in a minute, but those of you who need to make decisions for Jesus will have the QR code on the screen. For those of you who are at home, you can make decisions for Jesus today too. But for those of you in the building, if you're here and you're just saying, listen, I need to be part of a church. I might already be a believer, but I need to be part of a church. I want to be part of Revision Church Atlanta. Whether you are in the local area or not, you can do that today. Or for those of you who are saying, listen, I just need Jesus. I, I need to be in relationship with Jesus. I'm not quite in relationship. And I want to start a relationship with Jesus. I want to give him my heart today. If that's you, I just want you to raise your hand, whether you're in the seat or whether you're here at the front. I'm giving my life to Jesus, or I want to join Revision Church Atlanta. I'm giving my life to Jesus, or I just want to be part of this community who loves Jesus. If you're here today and you're saying, that's me, just raise your hand. God bless you. He sees you. God bless you. God bless you. He sees you. Yes, God bless you. God bless you. Listen, listen. If you're not in that number, you can return to your seats. If you're saying, I want to be, want to give my life to Jesus, or I want to join Revision Church Atlanta. Listen, right after service, for those of you who've raised your hand, we want you to meet Pastor Gina right down front. We want to make sure that we get your information. Pastor Gina will meet you right down front so we can be able to take your information. Has God spoken to your hearts today? I'm excited about part two next week. Minister Stephanie Knight will bring us the word as we continue this series on contentment. Let's talk to God this week. Let's let God know we got to have it. We got to have contentment. God bless you. Can we just magnify the Lord again today? Amen, amen, amen. Who's here ready to practice contentment? Amen. Go ahead and turn to your neighbor and say, it's time to practice contentment. It's time to practice contentment. Listen, I don't know about you all, but I was truly blessed here today. Truly, God is doing some amazing things. I want to let you all know that next week, to go along with this series, we will be starting a fast. A contentment fast starting March 10th, all right? So we want you to mark that on your calendars. That's March 10th. We'll be starting a contentment fast. So what we want you to do this week is we want you to already be starting to have those conversations with the Spirit and asking God, what is it that you want me to move out of my life during this fast? So that once we start next Sunday, you'll be ready to go. And so we ask that this upcoming week that you already begin to prepare your hearts and minds for what God has in store for us. Amen. 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 Listen, we want to just remind you of a couple of things that our small groups are starting back up. And we're so excited about our small groups. It's a time for us to be in community with one another. And so we encourage you, you can sign up on the QR code, but you can also go to our website to sign up for our small groups that's getting started. And if you are a part of our New Start team, that's our New Start team, we want to remind you that you all have a short meeting right after church is going to be down the hallway in the boardroom. So that's for all of our New Start members. Can we just stand for closing prayer here today? Listen, we want to just let you all know, if you are blessed here today, 
share this sermon with someone, whether it be your coworkers, whether it be a family member. We want you to think about who can you share this with? But not only that, we want you to invite them, whether it may be for them to attend online, virtual, or even in person as we continue this series together. Amen. Amen. Let's close with a word of prayer. God, we're so grateful because, Lord, you have truly spoke to us today through song and word. And so, God, Lord, we pray that we would learn to practice contentment. God, Lord, we pray that you would give us the spiritual gift of contentment. So, Lord, we pray that as we leave this place, that, God, you will continue to work on our hearts and our minds so that we can continue to receive what you have in store for us over the next couple of weeks. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed, Revision Church. Glory.